Hello, and welcome to the Gamer's Closet. I'm your host, Douglas Weed, and today we're going to be talking about Salem 1692. Salem 1692 is a game that was manufactured in 2015 by Facade Games. It started off as a Kickstarter and is in production today. It seats anywhere from 4 to 12 players, runs for about 35 minutes of game time, and is ready for ages 12 and up. This particular episode is brought to you by Facade Games. They are sponsoring the channel this month, and I do want to mention that anybody that leaves a comment in the comments below for the month of March 2023 gets entered into a drawing where you have a chance of winning one of the four current available facade products. Salem 1692, Tortuga 1667, Deadwood 1876, and Bristol 1350. But let's dig into this game a little further, shall we? The Salem Witch Trials were a series of hearings and prosecutions of people accused of witchcraft in colonial Massachusetts between February of 1692 and May of 1693. More than 200 people were accused, 30 people were found guilty, 19 of whom were executed by hanging, 14 women and 5 men. One other man, Giles Corey, was pressed to death after refusing to enter a plea, and at least 5 other people died in jail. Arrests were made in numerous towns beyond Salem and Salem Village, known today as Danvers, notably Andover and Topsfield. The grand juries and trials for this capital crime were conducted by a court of Oyer and Terminer in 1692 and by a superior court of Judicator in 1693, both held in Salem Town where the hangings also took place. It was the deadliest witch hunt in history of colonial North America. Only 14 other women and two men had been executed in Massachusetts and Connecticut during the 17th century. The year is 1692. The place, Salem, Massachusetts. You know the rest because you were there. Some of the children in the town have been experiencing visions in the night and pricks in their side. The only explanation? Witchcraft. A trial is called and one by one, accusations begin to fly. Evidence is presented. The servant girl, Mary, even says that she has witnessed witchcraft firsthand. While your friend John has gotten off the hook, the town beggar isn't so lucky. That's when things start heating up. Judge Danforth is throwing people into the stocks. The pastor has ascended the pulpit and given his blessing to Dr. Griggs. Alibis are rejected. Houses are torched and even true love has become tainted. To make things worse, night has fallen, and a constable can't save old Rebecca. But you, you're innocent. You're hunting the witches. That is, you were hunting the witches until conspiracy made you one of them. You see, Salem is a place where the only person you can't help is yourself. And at the end of the day, you won't know for sure who your friends are. The only thing you will know is that time is running out. This game does come with multiple pieces. It comes with one faux book container, comes with 128 cards. Of those cards, they consist of town hall cards, trial cards, and playing cards. Comes with one wooden gavel token, one black sand hourglass, and one rule book, which includes character biographies of all of the real people of Salem. So I normally go over the rules of the game in question and read through all of the rule books with photos, but this month all of our games are sponsored by Facade Games, so I thought I would let them actually tell you how this game is played. So stay tuned for a really, really good, good advertisement and walkthrough of how the game is played. So 
Here is Facade Games. The year is 1692 in the town of Salem, Massachusetts, and there has begun to be whisperings of witchcraft. Will you be the hero who purges your town of evil? Or will you be wrongly accused and hanged? Or perhaps you will become a witch yourself, escape conviction, and bring Salem to the ground. To set up the game, shuffle the town hall cards and give one to each player. Each of these characters has a unique ability that players can use during the game. Next, remove the knight, conspiracy, and black cat from the deck, and then give each player three cards. Shuffle the conspiracy back into the deck and place knight at the bottom. Finally, create a deck of trial cards according to the table in the rulebook. This deck will contain not a witch, witch, and constable cards. These are shuffled and distributed evenly to each player. If you begin the game with a witch card, you are a witch and your goal is to eliminate all non-witch players. If you do not have a witch card, you are a townsperson and your goal is to find all the witch cards. Play begins with the witches secretly giving any player the black cat card. This card immediately puts the recipient at a disadvantage and provides the first clue as to who may be hiding as a witch. Play then begins with the player who was given the black cat and proceeds clockwise. On your turn, you may either draw two cards from the deck and end your turn, or you may play any number of cards on any other players. Cards with a green border produce a one-time effect and are discarded after use. Cards with a blue border create continuous effects until they are removed by another card, such as the scapegoat or curse. Cards with a red border contain either one, three, or seven accusations. If you believe that someone is a witch, you can accuse them with these accusation cards. As soon as a player receives seven total accusations, the player who laid the final accusation gets to reveal one of the accused player's trial cards. If a witch card is found, the discovered witch is out of the game. If a player is innocent, they are out of the game as soon as all of their trial cards have been revealed. If on your turn you draw a black card, it must be revealed and played immediately. If conspiracy is drawn, all players must take a face-down trial card from the player on their left. If you receive a witch card, your objectives change and you join the team of witches. If you lose your witch card, however, you still remain a witch for the rest of the game. If night is drawn, all players will close their eyes and the witches will secretly choose to eliminate one player. The player with the constable card will attempt to save someone by placing the gavel token. After the night is over, but before the witch's target is revealed, players who are feeling threatened will have a chance to save themselves by flipping over one of their own trial cards in exchange for immunity. The night phase is facilitated either by a non-playing moderator or through use of the kill cards included in the game. As soon as all of the witch cards have been found, the townspeople win! If at any point only witches remain, the witches win. In Salem 1692, you'll need to create alliances, use logic, and observe other players' actions and mannerisms in order to find and eliminate the witches. Otherwise, the whole town may soon be overrun with evil. Well, this has been an overview of Salem 1692. First, I want to thank Facade Games for sponsoring the channel this month and showing us their fun and interesting backstabbing games. This particular game, like I said, was a Kickstarter game. Uh, it has a really nice campaign behind it and they were able to produce multiple copies of this and it is in print today. You can find it at such locations as um, Barnes & Noble, maybe Target. Uh, you can find it online on their website and on Amazon, which I have included the links up above for Amazon. Uh, the game itself is very easy to pick up, very easy to play. Um, you do have to have a few people for it. Um, there are rules in here for two to three players, but you do have to create ghost players, which is not always the best situation for smaller games. But as for a theme party game, oh, this is a great game. You know, you have lots of backstabbery. You don't know exactly who's on your side, who's against you. Not only that, it has that random element to it, so you don't know what to expect when conspiracy happens. You don't know if you're going to get sucked into it or not. So it has a really nice theme behind it. The cards look great. It has really nice art to it. Um, I'm a big fan of the book format, which I think is a 
really novel way to create a game. All of Facade's games are like this. Um, they all have different coding on them. They just finished a new Kickstarter for Hollywood 1947, uh, which I do recommend you checking out. You may still be able to get on the back end of that, which that particular game is about uh, making movies and you have to deal with patriotism and dastardly communists in the background trying to interject their own political agendas into movies. But again, that falls with the, uh, the Dark City series that Facade puts out. So I'd recommend taking a look at that. Now that is not part of the, um, the contest options because again it's currently not in print but like I said their Kickstarter just ended so I would recommend taking a look at it. I'm a big fan like I said of the of the books they have a really nice cardboard feel to them they have really nice art so I'm a big fan of the way they make these games. Um, it has a nice the nice hourglass to it and it has some really nice card boxes now the only downside of this game is it doesn't really hold um, the sleeving of cards well. You want to make sure your cards last. They come in two pre-packed boxes, which you could put them back in there, but over time they will get beat up a little bit, so I would be a little more careful with it, but as quality of card material, oh yeah, they're top-notch. So this game, um, I always have fun with it. I have a blast playing it with my friends. These games get downright dirty and mean, so if you want a game that has some nice competitiveness to it, it's kind of a social deduction game on top of a mystery game on cop on top of a uh, uh, how sneaky can I be game this is a great game so if you haven't played Salem before I would recommend picking up this game um, I think retail on this game is about 25 bucks sometimes you can find it cheaper on facades website uh, and like I said if you are the contest winner of whoever puts comments into the comments of this video and the other three videos that are coming this month, you do get entered in for a drawing where you can win this product or the other three. So please keep in mind that the more entries you put in on that, the better for you. So I will be announcing that on the uh, beginning of April of who won, and I'll then just need the contact information from you. But like I said, if you haven't played uh, Salem 1692, I would strongly recommend playing this game. Well, that's it from us here at the Gamer's Closet. We'd like to thank you for checking out our video on Salem 1692 from Facade Games. If there's a game in the future you'd like us to review or go over, please put it in the comments below. Please hit subscribe so that way you can be the first to check out our future content. And as always, please, have a great gaming day. Great.